All right, let's look a little closer at generating an inverse of a function. So remember our notation, f of x equals whatever our function is. And if I use all of the inverse operations, the ones that undo everything after switching out x and y, I'll end up with the inverse function f to the negative one of x using that just that notation just means inverse okay uh, so if I start with an example f of x equal to 2x minus 5 and I want to generate the inverse of that function okay uh, somebody wrote in their paragraph about how you switch out f of x and x which was really well said uh, I could write x equals to f of x minus 5, but it gets a little cumbersome and it's really easy to get that squirreled around. So we'll use y instead, just because it's easier. And once I've got that set up, it's just a matter of isolating y, just like you did in Algebra 1 when you wanted to do slope-intercept form so you could graph, or just like you would do if you've got something you need to put in y equals in your calculator. It might make it easier to think about it if you switch these two sides of the equation. We're more accustomed to having y on the left-hand side, so go ahead and rewrite it, 2y minus 5 equal to x. Uh, for some of you guys, that may be enough to fix it in your head. Now you know what you need to do. Uh, we'll go ahead and finish, though. You need to get y by itself. Add 5 to both sides. Now we're looking at 2y equals x plus 5. Then we'll just divide the 2 off of the y. So y equals, I divide everything over here by 2. And then we need to check to see if it can be simplified at all. So what we want to do is make sure we think of this as x divided by 2 plus 5 divided by 2. That makes it a little bit easier to see if any of the fractions can be simplified, if anything can be changed. Remember, there's a 1 coefficient on the x. I could write this as 1 half x or just leave it as x over 2. 5 halves doesn't simplify. 2.5, stay away from decimals. We'll just leave that as 5 halves. Because it doesn't simplify, I can leave it in this form, x plus 5 over 2, or I can write out the expanded version, x over 2 plus 5 halves. Same exact thing. All right, we'll look at a couple more examples. What about f of x equals one third x plus nine? When I rewrite that, x equals one third y plus nine. I'm going to leave this one as it is and just go straight to isolating y. Subtract nine. These are not like terms, so I just write down x minus 9 equals 1 third y. We could divide by 1 third, but dividing by a fraction just makes things more complicated. Remember, another way to clear this or undo it is to multiply by the reciprocal 3 over 1. That means I multiply everything over here by 3 over 1, which is just a nice way of writing 3. This tells me y equals... 3 times x minus 9. Again, I can leave it here or distribute the 3. 3x minus 27. Either of these formats is fine. They both represent the inverse equation. What about quadratics? If f of x equals 3 times the quantity x minus 12 squared plus 6. Either way, it's got the same first step, so to speak. I'm going to rewrite this as x equals 3 times y minus 12 quantity squared plus 6. I'm still going to isolate the y value. At this point, though, before we can get at it, I've got to get rid of everything on the outside of these parentheses before I can get there. So we're going to treat this like one object for a little while. Subtract the 6 from both sides just like we normally would. Because we're treating this as one entity, 
The next thing we're gonna do is divide by three. Divide everything by three. X over three, that's not gonna simplify at all. But six over three, six divided by three is two, so I can write minus two, equals the quantity y minus 12 squared. I've gotten rid of everything else. Now I'm ready to start dealing with these parentheses in this exponent. Order of operations says you gotta deal with the exponents first. You clear a square root, a square by taking a square root. Square rooted everything on this side. So we're gonna take the square root of everything on that side. I'm not even gonna try to simplify. We're just gonna leave that the square root of x over three minus two equals y minus 12. Last step is easy, add 12 to both sides. Here's where you wanna be careful. This has all been under the radical. We're taking the square root of everything there, but we're not taking the square root of this 12 that we're adding. So when we write it all down, it needs to stay separate. So my inverse function equals the square root of x over three minus two outside the radical plus 12. Sometimes you'll see these in parentheses, sometimes they won't be, they're optional, it doesn't matter. Okay. Last example, we'll go back the other way. We're going to start with a radical function. f of x is equal to negative square root of x plus 2 minus 3. Again, sometimes you'll see this in parentheses, sometimes you won't. If it's going to confuse you, make sure you always go back and add them in there. But this minus 3 is not under the radical, and that's important. Rewrite. x is equal to negative square root of y plus 2 minus 3. And just like we did with the quadratic example, we're going to treat this radical part as its own entity for a little while. Get rid of everything on the outside of it. It may help to put the 1 here because that's negative 1 times all of that and we'll isolate like normal add 3 x plus 3 is equal to negative 1 times the square root of y plus 2 still treating this as its own divide by the negative 1 let's go ahead and at least condense this negative x minus 3 is equal to the square root of y plus 2. Now that we've isolated the radical and have it on its own, we're going to treat it just like we did with the quadratic one. We had the square root on its own, we took the square root. We have the square root on its own, we're going to square the whole thing to clear that. I'm going to square all of this. Now I could write this binomial twice and do the multiplication. I don't need you to do that though, it's not as important as the way we're going to use it. So we're going to leave it negative x minus 3 quantity squared equal to y plus 2 subtract the 2 and here it's a little bit easier to see this is definitely separate from what's going on there so to write my inverse function the quantity negative x minus 3 squared minus 2 and we're all finished